Investing in real estate can be lucrative, but as with any investment, there will always be some risk involved. Now, that doesn't mean that you should be scared to invest. Remember, in order to reap rewards, you must be willing to take risks. But in our case, we want to make these risks as calculated as we can. And in today's video, I'm showing you some of my own strategies for managing risk in investing in real estate. Are you ready to dive into the world of real estate but want to ensure a secure path? Investing doesn't have to be so risky so long as you move with caution and put some safeguards in place. Let's look at a few ways that you can successfully manage some of these risks. The best way to mitigate your risk is to do the proper research so that you really have a clear understanding of where your property is located and the benefits of being in that location. And so you got to start at the state level. You know, is the state a business friendly state? Is the state a location where in migration is happening with jobs coming in and people moving in? Does the state legislature and governing bodies look at business in a friendly way? Have they structured laws that benefit businesses and more particularly landlords? Or are they one with which they are more leaning and beneficial towards, uh, you know, consumer and uh, tenants or residents. So that's important. And then and you move down to the, you know, the city level, you've got to look at what are the, the leadership of the city? Are they business friendly? What kind of laws are they passing? Are they in fact following the law? We shared in a previous video uh, about uh, areas where not to invest, where there's some counties, cities that are no longer following eviction laws, that they're intentionally delaying evictions from six to nine months instead of 45 days. So it's important to understand at the city level what's going on there. Also, is the city favorable with people migrating in, in migration to the city? Is it attractive? Are they spending money in infrastructure to make those improvements? And then in the sub-market uh, of the area of the city, are you in the good area of the city or the bad area of the city? Right? Like if your location is in the bad area of the city or less desirable, let's say, you're going to struggle to get good people in there because good people don't want to live in a less desirable place. I mean, I always tend to challenge team members and think about it like if you were going to live there, right? Like, and I lived, my very first place was a duplex apartment that I bought, you know? Um, well, not first. I lived in some apartment communities too, but first one that I owned. And, you know, would you live there? Would you feel uh, safe or confident bringing your wife or your husband home and your kids home with you there? That's how you got to look at it. It's really critical. Now, it sounds like a lot, but and, and to some extent it is because, look, you need to really take every step possible to mitigate and de-risk the investment. And that's how we've been able to do it successfully for over 20 years is by trying to mitigate the risk. You can't eliminate it because... Not everything's in your control, but you absolutely got to take the fundamental steps necessary that we're talking about here and doing the analysis as I've just broken it down on your overall market from the very top, starting with the state. And even from there, we look at the, the geographic trend for the area, right? And then we boil it all the way down through those uh, rings that we just went through all the way down to the submarket, even the neighborhood, right? So, and I, I'm telling you this now, I remember a property that we passed on in Atlanta because it was in a, a, a decent area, right? Like, I mean, not great, but it was good. And then at the end of the street, it was a dead end cul-de-sac and right across from it was a notorious property where the owner just kind of let havoc run and didn't really manage it well. Like that's not a good position, right? So we're going to make all these improvements to this property, but right across the street is just a bad situation. And that was also, we were looking at it at the end of 21 coming into 22. And it's like, look, things have a potential to be softening with this situation going on with inflation and interest rates, no doubt to come. And we don't want to be caught in that situation. So it's very important to have proper analysis. So next factor that you can really capitalize on to help de-risk your project is property due diligence. So you've got to really be able to focus on before acquiring the property, really understanding the overall condition of the entire asset, meaning what is the condition and age of the roofs? What is the condition and age of the buildings? 
what is the condition and age of the units, what is the condition and age of your HVAC electrical system. All of these things are critical. So now what we do, we've had a lot of experience, you know, buying thousands of units. And so, you know, when we go in and we get a property under contract, we have that typically 30 day due diligence period. We go in and we walk every unit. Like, I mean, we've had, good Lord, uh, 450 unit acquisition. We walk every single unit, not just the sampling. And, you know, whether it's 100 units or 450 units, we're walking them all because it's important to understand that. We have our roofing contractor come in and they evaluate all the roofs. We have a plumber come in with one of the underground cameras and we go in and we snake all of the plumbing main drain lines to see if there's any rust or failure in them because that's a significant cost. Uh, we look at all of the HVAC systems and water heaters in each of the units as well. Uh, we look at the electrical systems to ensure that they are in good condition. Uh, we have a contractor inspect all the buildings and the foundations so that really we've left no stone unturned as it relates to us being able to understand what kind of capital it takes to do the renovations. And then now we're able to properly incorporate that into our renovation budget so that we're not guessing at what it's going to be like. Um, it's really critical. And then also with that, we're doing the due diligence on the location, as I shared with you earlier. And then we're looking at the immediate surrounding areas. I went to a property one time and uh, it was in South Carolina. <laughs> I was going to meet the guy on a Monday. The location of it was one where it was just more conducive for me to get there Sunday, which again, it's intentional to get there ahead of when I'm going to meet the guy. So I drive by the property Sunday night um, and right across from the property is a park. And as I drove by, there had just been a shooting there like an hour before the police are there and, you know, it was a basketball park and stuff like that. And, you know, so the next day when I'm talking to the guy, I'm like, you know, yeah, what about that? And he's like, oh, yeah. And, you know, tried to downplay it. And the truth of the matter is we didn't move forward on that property because it was not in a desirable area. And even if you make those improvements that we would want to do, people aren't going to drive through an undesirable location or area to come to a desirable property. It's just not going to happen. So very critical. Financing strategies is important as well because there's different financing options. I remember, you know, one of my early mentors, he'd been in the space for probably 35 years. He said, Randy, you always want to match the debt with the project, meaning like your timeline of debt is there with your project. So again, you've got fixed uh, financing options like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So that again, oftentimes those are five, seven, 12 year kind of terms. Uh, they provide a fixed rate, um, you know, typically historically was 75%, you know, uh, loan to cost. Now it's probably anywhere from 55 to 65. Um, now the benefit there is you have a fixed rate. The downside is that there are usually some fairly steep uh, set penalties if you sell early uh, called yield maintenance. You also can get a step down prepayment penalty with those, but that also cuts proceeds down to that 55 level versus 65 level. So those are things that have to be considered. There's also bank debt financing uh, that can be fixed rate as well uh, over the, the term of the project. And then there's bank or bridge financing as well that is oftentimes variable rate. Now the variable rate has also come into play now in the last 18 months because rates have gone up so quickly. You know, SOFR has gone from, you know, half a point to, you know, five and a quarter now. And so that's a, a challenge for those projects. But with that, you also can get a term that's fixed over, say, three years with additional extensions of, you know, one or two years. And then with those, you can buy a rate cap that locks the cap in where it's not going to grow by a certain uh, amount more than that. So it's always important to understand what is best going to mitigate your uh, financial risk. And that also ties back to what my early mentor said is like, you got to match it with the project. Like, you know, so we have bought projects that our intended turnaround time was two years. You really wouldn't want to match up a 12 year loan on a two year project. So again, it's important to understand how you can best minimize your risk through these strategies. Diversification is also uh, an important part of it. What I mean by that is to the benefit of owning multiple properties or owning a real estate portfolio. So again, you know, we have over 3000 units uh, across a diversified number of locations. And so it's important that again, I would suggest in a real estate investment strategy. And again, now I was a money manager 
been a stockbroker for 15 years, owned my own company that we sold in 2006. I would always say that you'd want to, you know, have diversification as part of your practice. And what I mean by that is even when you're going to implement real estate into your investing, you're not just putting, you know, hey, I'm putting in 200 grand in this one spot. You're planning to invest over multiple spots. And we even work with people to create a laddering system where it's like, hey, I want to invest $800,000. We're going to invest 200 in this location, 200 in this location, 200 in this location, 200 in this. Lo so it gives you that diversification and you're creating a system where as those properties sell, it's even creating liquidity that's coming back to you uh, every two to three years as those properties kind of work through. So definitely a benefit to be able to minimize your risk through diversification. Legal protections and insurance is critical. You've got to have the proper legal structures in terms of the ownership, meaning the LLCs, and then also coupled together with that, the proper insurance, not only for the property, but the general liability insurance to make sure that you've got the safeguards in place so that again, in today's society, it's just a function of reality and life where I mean, good Lord, everywhere you look, you've got uh, advertisements and legal billboards uh, for, you know, slip and fall and different things of that nature. And so it's important to really be able to make sure that you've got the proper legal protections in place and quality good insurance that protects you as well. What I believe is absolutely most important is the proper underwriting of all of these factors, right? Because if you don't take all of these into to to place. And again, we've done an entire video that I would encourage you to check out on underwriting. But you've got to be conservative in your approach. You've got to make sure that you've got your numbers correct for the uh, renovation aspect of the property. You've got to make sure that your numbers are correct as it relates to what rents you'll get as a result of that. You've got to make sure that you're using the right financing approach in terms and even the right cap rates uh, again, videos that we've done uh, also talking on those things because it's where I've seen people have not used a overall conservative approach, you know, minimizing your rent growth, um, not just putting in there that everything's going to go perfect. Look, friends, things don't go exactly perfect. That's real life. And by having a conservative underwriting approach, you mitigate your risk further because you're allowing for a measure or a margin of error that exists in human beings, right? The reality is not everything's gonna go perfect all the time. And what I've seen, and you know, here it is 2023, I've seen guys that did that. They underwrote that everything had to go perfect and now it's a deal. The truth of the matter is things didn't go perfect and what they said was a deal is now a challenged property that they're gonna sell for a break even or a loss. And that's going to yield, unfortunately, uh, for their bad results, but also for the marketplace opportunity. So make sure that your underwriting is sound, conservative, and it covers all the bases. I have a free gift for you in the description of this video. I'm here to keep you informed so that you can make the best decisions when it comes to investing your hard-earned money. I've created a free guide to help you on your real estate journey. Click the link below to check it out. That's all I have for you, folks. If you've learned something today, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content on real estate investing. See you in the next video.